Hello everyone. If you are a marine engineer specifically from Mass Gondo, then this video is for you. For today's interview, we have Mr. Bhushan Raj with us. He is the honorary founder secretary of Amazon Nautical Association. Even after 44 years of industry experience, he is all excited to do more and more things and give more and more back to the industry. And throughout this video, we are going to see how fellow marine engineers from Masgon Dog, like Mr. Bhushan Raj, came together to register Amazon Nautical Association, also known as ENA. We will also know about what is ENA, how it's contributing back to the industry, membership details, and a lot more. So stay tuned with us throughout the session to know more about it. Welcome, sir. And uh, it's really great to have you. And thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Thank you very much for your perseverance. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before, you know, directly moving into the details. Okay. So that's an extremely valuable question. Uh, see, I, uh, the government of India uh, in the 70s, 80s or whatever, even before that, had just one body called the uh, Directorate of Marine Engineering Training. Or before that, it used to be called, uh, along with T.S. Rajendra or Dufferin. Okay. So this was under the Ministry of uh, Transport, Delhi. Uh, independent of that, they had given permissions to certain major shipyards in the country to have a parallel program for marine engineers. Yeah, it was either a two-year or a three-year or a four-year program, depending on the establishment. So I joined Mazgondock in 1980 on a four-year marine engineering program, training program. Yeah, it was like an apprenticeship. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that program has been discontinued in 2012. Uh, I think the last batch which was inducted was then, much um, after I passed out. So that's where my journey, my professional journey with marine engineering started in 1980. Uh, 84, we passed out. Uh, uh, and uh, then we moved out into the real world as junior engineers. Uh, so this journey continued. Uh, we were informally in contact with uh, our seniors, our super seniors, our juniors, our super juniors, uh, things like that. Uh, and uh, from the time the WhatsApp platform came into existence, or before that it was on telephone contact and stuff like that, we would meet annually. Uh, at some uh, place uh, and do, and we'll have a get together, a social evening together. Otherwise, we were in constant touch with each other, but they were independent satellite pools. So in 2021, uh, where whilst we were relatively quite, in fact, very active on the WhatsApp platforms, we had various WhatsApp groups, one being for technical, where we have over 284 members. As I speak with you, there are 284 members in that technical group where there's a daily discourse and discussions and guidance and guidelines uh, uh, connected to everything related to the to our profession, uh, which includes uh, uh, the uh, uh, guidelines from the Director General of Shipping or if something has to come up from the Mercantile Marine Department. Uh, and we've got members who are holding various positions, very senior positions uh, all over the world in Hong Kong, Singapore, because shipping being a global kind of profession. Na? This continued on the WhatsApp domain. Then we have a community group where there's about 178 members. The objective of the community group being doing uh, community welfare, sharing initiatives which some members have individually taken and stuff like that. So the technical group is entirely predominantly technical and we are very, very particular about keeping it uh, like that. There's no Monday and good morning, good evening, pleasantries exchange. We're very, very particular, very professional on that. Okay. So in 2021, I got a call uh, from one of my uh, contemporaries uh, suggesting that we consider uh, making this into a legal entity. Now you might uh, ask why a legal entity? Yeah. Uh, as an informal entity, uh, we can continue doing what we can, but not to a grander, larger, uh, more measured scale. We have registered ourselves as an association in September 2021. And the discussion started in April 2021. Yeah, so every Saturday we have we would have Zoom meetings just like this one, which would last for two hours, two and a half hours, sometimes a little bit less. And we were consulting with chartered accountants. We were taking advice from legal advisors, advocates and stuff like that. We were vetting documents of agreement from other associations and stuff like that. So because we wanted to know how we should register, whether we should consider being a Section 8 company, 
which reports mm -hmm. to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs in Delhi. We looked at that mm -hmm. option because then you can have FDIs come in. You know, see, all freedom begins with economic freedom, Chalu. Yeah. So if you want to deliver our objectives and uh, and activities, then there's a certain amount of money which is required. Yeah. Uh, that's hard nose pragmatism. So the meetings happened every Saturday from April 2021 till we eventually got it registered in September 2021 on the 22nd of September. Now, uh, the in the course of the journey, we decided that we will take a small baby step first. Yeah. Instead of doing a section eight, which is a big giant step. Yeah. Uh, because what happens uh, is in a situation like this, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of genuine enthusiasm initially. But then there are uh, the majority of the governing council members here. We have seven governing council members whose names are there in the documents of the Charity Commissioner's Office. They are all in harness. They're all working. Some of them, one of them is sailing. In fact, as I speak with you right now, he's on the ship as a chief engineer. Yeah. So we decided to register ourselves. Under the under the Societies Act of 1860, as an association. Now, coming down to the name, yeah, it took a lot of efforts. Uh, we have we have members in the governing council who are running transnational uh, business enterprises. Yeah, uh, so one of them helped us develop the logo. Yeah, then the name it took a lot of uh, uh, brainstorming. Now, so the crux of the name was on the first word, Amaze Eng. Now, yeah, so if I break Amaze Eng into A and M-A-Z and E-N-G, it's M-A-Z because we are all pass out from Mazgon Docks. We are all alumni from Mazgon Docks. So M-A-Z came from Mazgon Docks Limited. And uh, then E-N-G as an engineer. So that's how Amaze Eng came up, came into existence. Okay. Then Nautical... Uh, because uh, we deal with uh, various on board, uh, there are all kinds of issues. So we didn't want to restrict it to just the engine room. Yeah. So we broadened the whole scope of the name to nautical. An association because we got registered as an association under the Society's Act. That's how ANA, -A, or which is the acronym for Amazing Nautical Association. Now, I must uh, share something interesting and important here with you. Uh, this exhibition. Uh, there was also a stall by Masgondok Limited. So uh, we were manning this stall, which was given to us free, uh, because when I requested the uh, last year, I told them that we are registered as a not-for-profit organization. We're not mm -hmm. generating profits. We're not running a business. Yeah, We mm -hmm. don't charge for our technical troubleshooting. Yeah, And every day there's something or the other, some chief engineer on the ship, or somebody ashore who's got his friend as a chief engineer or a second engineer who's got some technical problem, you know. And uh, we've got seniors in our in our group who are technically extremely good, yeah, to do the troubleshooting. And then we will guide them step by step, and we'll ask for more information stuff like that. So Masgon Rock had a stall this time at the boat ship and boat building exhibition, okay. And uh, the chief manager EPC uh, happened to pass by, and he stopped at the stall which I was uh, manning. And he started talking to us. And uh, then I went over to his stall. And he was delighted to hear that there is a registered entity called Amazing Nautical Association who are exclusively alumni from Masgon Dock only. All our members. We are, till now, uh, members who have passed out from Masgon Dock only. Yeah. See, uh, uh, we have a very strong sense of belonging because of the name. The umbilical connect with Masgondok Limited is very strong because of M-A-Z-E-N-G. Uh, that's a good question, actually. And it, you've taken me back uh, all the way to two or three years back. Uh, so the challenge was to learn how we could agree to disagree with each other in the larger interest of creating, giving birth to this entity. There were various people who had, in a situation like this, I'll tell you what happened, Shalu. The shipping industry yeah, uh, has certain advantages. That is, uh, we get to see the world. because And it will never end. The shipping industry will never end because the bulk of the tra the logistical transportation of goods services and all happens through the sea water bodies yes. okay so naturally 
the professional fallout of 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 it is that you get to be a global citizen okay, so the challenge was so all of us were senior professionals all of us were strong with our opinions our perceptions yeah and all of us uh, felt that what each one of us is saying is the ultimate truth whereas opinions opinions perceptions the perceptions and truths are truths okay yes. but we had to we had to come together uh, uh, and that is why it took from april to september you know because we went back each time discuss it with charter accountants discuss it with with advocates uh, and uh, i must i must share this with you we had no funds we had no we had not created any corpus fund to to spend on the on the registration to spend on the chartered accountants fees to spend on the advocate legal fees you know because all this takes money all this yes. takes money and then we yes. had people uh, and these meetings had people from hong kong singapore uh, indonesia uh, china uh, india various states in india i was sitting in bangalore at that time you know although i am a resident of mumbai right now i'm in mumbai but at that point in time i was in bangalore uh, so that was a challenge you know to bring everybody together on the same common page and then we had to vet various uh, documents of other associations and pick what we could uh, apply modify and customize to suit our requirements so if i were to reverse engineer uh, what was our requirements you no know, to our requirements we had to define our objectives what do we want to do yeah what are the activities uh, like i said earlier in this conversation uh, we are all filled with a lot of enthusiasm but everybody is working everybody is busy okay so to give time i can give time because i'm retired but having said that i have several interests which keep me very very busy yeah i have several interests yeah a lot of them uh, uh, see one of the questions and i must share this again as a challenge one of the questions a lot of times my own batchmates and other juniors or seniors would say what are we going to get out of it and my yeah. answer to that my answer to that and i am saying this with my hand on my heart my answer to that was at this stage in my life i want to give back i don't want to receive so these were the challenges you know to 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 relate to your question there were lots of these challenges uh, of uh, of talking to advocates uh, getting quotations from them people were asking for 62000 bucks you know 40000 bucks and we had we had not a single we didn't even have a bank account you know we got all that after we registered we went and opened up yeah all that happened uh, in uh, from january to september i was in bangalore i came uh, on the 23rd or the 21st of september i came back to mumbai uh, 22nd we were registered then we went and spoke with a couple of banks and we opened up our account with access bank because it was very convenient and close to the registered office address and uh, how did we uh, where did we get the money uh, we we had agreed in the course of our journey that we will have uh, x number of founder members and that these would be the fees for the founder members so all of all of us put our checks together we went and opened an account and dropped those checks there and uh, and i i feel very happy to tell you that all that money is been locked away safely you know there's been locked away eight some of it has been invested with uh, an investment company uh, some of it has been locked away as a fixed deposit because these are members money and we are accountable yeah you know i'm just digressing a little bit to you but i think it's important uh, to share as part of my journey you know as part of the anna journey it's not just me today talking to me but uh, there's other members uh, who have contributed hugely from their past experience some of them have been with the institute of marine engineers for a very long time you know so and the institute of marine engineers has got a humongous cor uh, corpus which runs into crores and you know we didn't even have a single rupee okay and we just uh, we just three years now this september we will be in complete three years and there's a long way to go yes and there is a lot more there's a lot more yeah. to be achieved phenomenal amount of more yeah uh, there's a batch meet of mine who in the during the covid had to disembark because he was not well okay and then he was rushed into a hospital and we lost him okay he died because of covid okay now you would know that uh, when it comes to claiming insurance or compensation there is a whole list of documents which they ask for 
and had got off on distress conditions and he had nothing on his person. Okay. So uh, the honorary president, Mr. Sanjeev Mehra, uh, when I brought this up, he said, okay, uh, let me try. Now, we don't deal with the Maritime Union of India. We don't. Now, typically, if I was working for an Indian company or even with a, in, with a foreign company, uh, then there would be a common bargain agreement uh, and there would be MUI fees which are paid because I'm an Indian. Okay, the Maritime Union of India is about uh, Indian seafarers. Okay, so this, uh, my the president, honorary president, Sanjeev Mehra, he reached out to MUI and it was a long journey, it took several months. We got him a compensation of 40 lakhs. His wife got 40 lakhs. Now, if we didn't, if we were not a registered body, they would say, who are you? Because there will be X number of people who can, N number of people who just walk around, all with the best intentions. There's another uh, super senior of mine, 1972 pass out. Okay. Uh, he's got no kids. Yeah, he's about 75, 77. He's bedridden. Okay. And uh, so one of my batchmates uh, who had sailed with him, this man was his chief engineer. He brought the case to me. Yeah. And we appealed. And we raised two and a half lakhs. And last year for his birthday, I went and gave him a check for one lakh. And he looked at me with tears. And I, I, I am very moved to tell you this. He looked at me with tears. And his wife had tears in eyes. And she said, he just went through a cataract operation. And we were wondering how we're going, what we're going to do for the next month's expenses. There's lots, there's lots more to be done. We are, uh, uh, we are a very small, uh, uh, you know, nascent organization, just less than three years. There's a long distance to cover. And every time at the get together, when I meet my juniors and all, I tell them, look, you're the young guys. Yeah, we are there to support, we're there to guide, you know, whatever. But you have to take the baton and start running with it, you know, when we're still around. So these are challenges. Uh, and, and, uh, and these are fears. For me, I'm, I'm fearful. I'm fearful about, about what's the future going to be. But then, uh, this is part of life, uh, Shalu. This is part of life. Yeah. The mission, when we put up the poster, the mission which we put there, there's a flock of geese which are ascending, flying up in the sky. And the words are, get the flock together. That's the mission. And the vision is to support underprivileged brethren. Like I gave you examples. Yeah, We would love to extend and expand our uh, philanthropic uh, activity. Uh, unfortunately, we are, you know, like I said in the beginning of this uh, conversation, that all freedom begins with economic freedom. But we do what we can. We crowdfund, you know. Now, some of us, some of the members have donated money. Yeah, and... Uh, they are retired, so they then we give them a certificate uh, because we are tax exempted. You know, we can we can give them that certificate. The donor as well as the donee can claim tax exemption to whatever amount. So we support in whichever way possible. You know, uh, so uh, the vision is is to continue supporting the underprivileged brethren. Uh, uh, to see, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, people who are sitting ashore in the in the manning function. You know. So they will ask, you know, is there anybody, uh, any junior who's looking out for a job, who hasn't got a break, you know, anybody whom you know, your family or extended family, you know, or any uh, other ranks also. Or there will be uh, questions, hey, we need a chief engineer for 10 days. We need a chief engineer for two months, you know, anybody possible. Then uh, recently there was a question, somebody, all kinds of questions. Somebody wanted to tug, a tugboat, you know, and he wanted it in Indonesia. And one of our governing, the treasurer actually, uh, he's been involved with fantastic activity, resurrecting old ships and all in Indonesia. So he supported him extensively, put him on to local contacts and put him on to you know, service providers. And then that guy was so blown, he, he sent a message on our group, you know, that I must, I'm grateful to, to you know, the treasurer's name is Rumi Umrigar. Yeah. Uh, so he said, I'm grateful to Rumi because his support was, was huge. Otherwise, uh, if you go to a foreign country, you know, you have to start building from scratch. You don't know whom to trust. You don't know how to network. And, you know, so I must also share with you, uh, last year, uh, like Sanjeev Mehra, the honorary president, he's got this workshop called Ken Mark Tech Solutions, you know. So last year, we had three batches of about 12, 13 each, 38 students from IMU, Mumbai, Indira Gandhi Maritime University, Mumbai. We had 35, 38 students. 
uh, and that's part of a mentoring. When you talk about vision, you know, that's part of a mentoring. Yeah? Besides philanthropy, besides charity, besides uh, participating in socio-cultural activities, mentoring is part of it. So 38, three different Saturdays, we had students come over to the workshop where we uh, explained the various components of the main engine, which they would not normally get exposure to. Yeah, in broken down condition, in repaired condition, yeah. then we would give them the, the instruments and, uh, and run the quiz to them. How would you measure what the error is and give them something to measure and things like that. Then we would run graphics, which we had handpicked. One of my juniors had handpicked uh, graphics on how hydraulic motors function, uh, things like that. Uh, then there was a ex surveyor who would talk to them about uh, how important it is for ships to be registered with classification societies and what it is all about, you know, how Lloyd's Register started in, in a bar in Liverpool in UK when it started, you know, the history, stuff which normally is not covered in academic, uh, you know, one has to dig into books or, uh, or come across it and things like that, you know. So last year, in fact, just today, I got a letter, I got an email from the principal, the director, uh, asking me to set it up again this time. So there'll be another batch which I will have to follow up and, and, and do this time again. Yeah, yeah. Important part of the vision is to hold uh, uh, webinars and all that. The last one which we held was in December. Uh, it was in a very different topic on energy saving devices where I had invited a company called Vayu Jal, who's an IIT Chennai person who makes water out of the atmosphere. It's called atmospheric water generator. Then there was another guy uh, who had made the first solar powered ferry called Aditya, which Prime Minister Modi also recommended, uh, uh, complimented and commended. So he was on the panel. Uh, there was another guy who was a paint uh, uh, expert uh, uh, and uh, how energy can be saved, fuel efficient. So there were about six panelists. So we do webinars regularly on different topics. We do, well, there was one on women marine engineers. So there are fees. Uh, because uh, that's how we generated uh, the corpus and that's been locked to me. Last year at the get-together, I had to inform everybody who was present that this is what uh, was parked and this is what we hold an AGM where we send out the balance sheet and, you know, PNL statements and stuff like that. So to answer your question, yes, there are categories of membership. membership. Uh, uh, the founder members is one category. The corporate members, one category. Corporate members... We normally, uh, uh, we still uh, haven't, uh, there are, I, I met somebody recently at the exhibition also who wanted to pay, but uh, there are heavyweights in the industry and we are embarrassed. We don't know how to handle that. We take a membership fee from very senior corporate uh, uh, heavyweights who have been in the maritime industry for a very, very long time, you know. Uh, so that is a policy decision which the governing council will decide case by case. Uh, uh, then there are, there is associate membership for people uh, like there are other shipyards who don't have legal entities like what we have as an association. Okay, like Bombay Port Trust, for example, Naval Dockyard, for example. Okay, so if, if we cross paths with them and if they wish to join, then there is a category of associate members. Yeah, uh, then that associate membership could be on annual basis. Then there's a student category membership of like 500 rupees, you know, uh, so because students are students, they're not started earning as yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I the way I see it, if there's a student who comes to me tomorrow and he wants to become a member, uh, then uh, I, I would sponsor him readily. 100 rupees is nothing in today's time. You know? And there's a lot of people like me who would be, would be willing to do that. You know? uh, in fact, that is something which I want to go ahead and, and do. Uh, uh, but uh, what happens is that, for example, I had approached Tolani. You know, Tolani uh, at Induri, Pune. It's a very old uh, shipping company and they have a huge... Uh, training institute there, their facilities and all that. But uh, uh, Tolani's been the, on the, when I came into the industry, Tolani's already been there. They had the ships and all. So most of the students are already members of the Institute of Marine Engineers. You know, so, and there's an overlap of activities. They are much, much bigger because they're much older than us. You know, they have publications, yeah, which they offer as merchandise. They have t-shirts, they have their mugs, they have bags and stuff like that as merchandise, you know. Uh, uh, we don't, we don't, we, we, we just had t-shirts and, and mugs at the get together and, uh, but that is predominantly at the get together, only the MDL people will come or the sponsors, the sponsors, you know, they have invitations, so they come you know, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, 
we are working on a mobile app so yes to answer your question there is a there is a link there is a qr code uh, uh, the important thing is uh, since uh, till now we have not uh, 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 extended the membership to anybody outside masgon dock uh, why am i saying this because the proposer and seconder uh, is part are the two fields which need to be filled in the membership uh, form okay uh, why is that important just to authenticate and they will ask which is your batch number what is your member your batch number each one of us had a number assigned to us you know i still remember my number which was assigned to me in 1980 which remained with me for four years okay so all that data uh, to is part of our database to authenticate our uh, that then we know and sometimes uh, if there is a, a name which is unknown to us then we will ask which batch were you you know so to answer a question uh, uh, yes uh, we there is a category of associate members whom i think if i talk to the governing council uh, we may be able to 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 bring in people who are not necessarily part of masgon docs because that was created uh, for uh, uh, people from bpt or uh, naval dockyard and stuff like that you know yeah so yes uh, there is a membership there is membership and uh, uh, i am quite uh, now that we are into the third year uh i i think uh, it is important to to sustain the the vibrancy and the uh, and the possibilities and the potential by extending the circle and making it larger not uh, limiting it to mdl particularly because after 2012 mdl has stopped uh, the entire training program so therefore we will uh, we will need to reconsider and uh, and uh, work along those lines